doing here. Further, according to a recent University of Chicago poll, a strong majority of Americans believe that the government is, quote, corrupt and rigged against me, end quote. That is how people perceive the government. Further, according to a recent USA Today poll, a very strong majority no longer believe that the Democratic or Republican parties are responding to their needs, and we have to move away from a two-party system to a multi-party system. And most frighteningly, there is a growing number of Americans who actually... Huge progress is being made on the fourth round of stimulus. I know many of you are wondering who exactly will be receiving a brand new stimulus payment this month. While lawmakers have confirmed new details, including the new eligibility requirements that Americans have to meet in order to receive these extra checks. Now, when the crisis first began in March 2020, commerce shut down in the United States. Only essential businesses stayed open. Some with office jobs were able to work from home, but millions of people lost their jobs, sending countless American households and business owners into a financial panic. The government enacted stimulus programs to help small businesses to pay their employees to revitalize restaurants, and to support restaurant venues forced to close. There are other programs that were created to help households pay their rent, mortgage, and some other housing expenses. The good news is that there is still money available. Governor Tom Wolf and the state's Democrats are still pushing for stop proposals to get $2,000 payments to most Pennsylvanians, though Republicans argue it will worsen inflation, which stands at 9.1%, highest it's been in four decades. Both senators and representatives plan to support bills which will pay back the Pennsylvania Opportunity Program that features the $2,000 checks. Wolf first made a billion-dollar proposal in February, and part of the proposal were the $2,000 checks to Pennsylvanians making $80,000 less. Governor Wolf recently said he's still hearing directly from so, much, so many people about how much this program would mean to them and their families. Several lawmakers agree with Governor Wolf, arguing families need the funds due to financial woes the crisis and inflation have caused. One lawmaker told reporters, friends and neighbors are still struggling to stabilize budgets and rebuild savings. The crisis also led many workers to rethink career goals and consider new jobs that foster better work-life balance. House Republican spokesman Jason Goetzman agrees with the Republican-led General Assembly that inflation will worsen with more stimulus payments. He told reporters it was Governor Wolf who abandoned this idea during budget negotiations to achieve other priorities, and he knows it belongs on the cutting room floor since it will only lead to increased costs on Pennsylvanians by continuing to drive inflation. Senator Scott voted against the recent Democratic proposal called the Inflation Reduction Act. One reason, Governor, is it won't reduce inflation. <laughs> but this bill, I think, is a nightmare for South Carolina. It's a nightmare for the American economy. And I could spend hours talking to you about it, but I won't. I'm going to talk about a couple provisions that I think are just tone deaf and ill-conceived. Believe it or not, <clears throat> this bill has a new gas tax. So uh, I want to just suggest something, Governor. Go around the state and ask people, would you like a new gas tax? I think they'll say no. So what, what does this bill do? It imposes a new gas tax of 16.4 cents per barrel on all imported oil at a time that we're becoming more dependent on imported oil. Remember the president went to Saudi Arabia urging them to produce more. So every barrel coming from overseas has a new tax on it. We're shutting down domestic production so we're going to increase tax on imported oil as an ill-conceived idea. It also has a 16.4 cents per barrel tax on domestic crude refined in America, which means that American refineries, the cost will go up, will make us less competitive. This starts with pennies, it becomes dimes, and eventually dollars. So I'm adamantly, adamantly opposed to any new gas taxes on the American consumer and the South Carolina uh, driving public. Republicans, to end the Affordable Care Act, they are basically trying everything. There was a time when there was this historic, tension-filled moment on the floor when three Republican senators saved the Affordable Care Act, Senators Murkowski, Collins, and John McCain. Indiana ended its 2021 fiscal year at the start of July with nearly $4 billion in reserves. 
And now the governor said, despite a crisis, India exceeded all expectations and closed the state fiscal year with an unprecedented amount in reserves. They have an obligation to put this money back in the hands of taxpayers instead of leaving it in the hands of the government. The House Speaker also said that leaders and legislators and legislators are going to work with the governor's office to pass legislation during the 2022 session to help streamline the process and make an additional 910,000 taxpayers eligible for the credit. After the legislation passes, taxpayers will be paid either by check or the direct deposit, depending on how they file the 2021 tax returns. Folks, checks will begin finally going out to people sooner than later. That's what we all wanted to see, and I'm glad it's finally happening. So here's some big news. Chuck Schumer, the Senate Majority Leader, has announced that Senate Democrats have a massive bill to address climate change, taxes, health care, and also inflation. They will move forward with it Saturday. They will move forward with it. They will move forward with this bill very soon. And right now, Democrats are trying to pass the bill under a, pre- under a budget process known as reconciliation. The process allows Democrats to pass the bill without the threat of a Republican filibuster. And all 50 Democratic senators are going to have to vote for the bill in order for it to pass with a tie-breaking vote from Kamala Harris. The vote Saturday afternoon will be a procedural one to begin debate. Up to 20 hours of debate can take place, with that time split evenly between the two parties. It's likely that the full 20 hours would not be as needed, and as Democrats are expected to yield back a majority of the time. Then friends, a process known as a vote around begins, which means senators can reintroduce unlimited amendments to the legislation. There could also be a call for an entire 725 bill page bill to be read aloud. Schumer said on Thursday that he's expecting the process to take a long time. In his words, I quote, I expect we'll have some late nights and extended debates on the floor. Now before the bill can get to the floor, the Senate parliamentarian needs to complete the analysis of the bill to determine whether it can be allowed under reconciliation in the first place. And after that, passing the bill is still not guaranteed, as Sonoma has not yet signaled her support for it. Meanwhile, Republicans have criticized legislation, and McConnell has called a a goodie bag of environmental activists at the expense of working families. He also says the bill will provide no relief or worsen inflation. But data from the Congressional Budget Office would shows that it would actually decrease deficit by roughly three hundred billion dollars, and its impact on inflation in the immediate future is negligible. Prescription drugs to seniors, uh, to to. Um to Americans all across this country, and that's why we've worked on bipartisan legislation that would include uh, uh, a cap on out-of-pocket costs. But what this bill does is not negotiation, and that is why I, I keep coming back to this, because the bill has a statutory ceiling price, which is tied to the, the drug's non-federal average manufacturing price. But the kicker there is that there's no price floor. So that means, as you think about a political appointee,